This is a simple method for finding the specific heat capacity of metals. We use an immersion heater, a thermometer and a metal block. In this case, we're using an aluminium block, which we first find the mass of, and we can see this is just over one kilogram. And we can see that this block has got two holes, one of which is for the immersion heater at the center, and the other one is for the thermometer a short distance away. We need to make sure we insulate the block well because we're going to heat it up well above room temperature so it will radiate out a lot of heat and if we have to add extra heat to compensate for this it means our value for the heat capacity will be higher than expected. I'm adding a small amount of water here to ensure a good thermal contact between the immersion heater, the thermometer and the block and now just adding a final bit of insulation to reduce any heat loss possible. So I've got the whole circuit wired up now. I've got a multimeter here as my ammeter, which is wired up in series with the circuit. And I've got another multimeter over here as my voltmeter, which is set up in parallel. The immersion heater runs at 30 watts and is supplied with a 12 volt power supply. So I've made sure that my voltmeter over here is set to read a maximum of 20 volts and my ammeter is set to read a maximum of 10 amps. Being careful to make sure that I've plugged my ammeter into the 10 amp socket so it can deal with the slightly higher currents. Now that everything's set up and ready I can turn the power supply on and I can start recording the temperatures with the alcohol thermometer here every minute for 10 minutes. I'm also going to make sure that I record values of current and values of voltage because I'm going to use those to plot a graph to find the specific heat capacity of the aluminium which is wrapped up under all of that bubble wrap. So I'm starting to take some measurements now of temperature and current and voltage. And as you can see from the readings on the multimeters, the actual power being delivered by the immersion heater is actually closer to about 40 watts rather than 30 watts. So the temperature is slowly creeping up and I'm making a reading once every minute. We can see there are also some variations and slight fluctuations on the voltmeter and the ammeter, but we may sometimes expect a slight upward trend uh, in the resistance and therefore maybe lower currents later on, but this doesn't seem to be the case. We're getting sort of fairly even readings throughout the experiment, which shows uh, that we could get some very good results from this. The temperature changes aren't particularly dramatic. Sometimes we do this experiment and we see the temperature creeping up to 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. The highest temperature we got here was just over 40 degrees. The mat at the bottom is to again help insulate the block and get to the end of the 10 minutes. So I'm just having a check to see how much heat we've lost and the outside of the installation felt no warmer than room temperature so we'd lost very little heat at all.